one man on his bike and he's close to fulfilling his dream. Mark Beaumont wants to smash the record for cycling around the world. He's already covered 14,000 miles across Europe, Asia and Australia. Now he must cross his last continent, America. He came close to collapse in Australia, pushing himself to the limit of endurance. So I feel incredibly weak. I don't know what I don't know what to do. But he's yet to face the most dangerous moment of the trip. Getting hit by a car and getting uh, mugged in the same day. Can he still find the strength to make his dream come true? Fifty days in the saddle lie between him and his target for the world record. For five months now, like I've been physically tired. And in pain, you know, every single day. San Francisco to Paris. So near and yet so far. This is a pretty spectacular start to the US leg. Um, really, really hilly just south of San Francisco. Um, and cold. I'm uh, not used to this at all. It's, um, it's still early morning and I'm going to have to be on the road at 7 o'clock at, at daybreak and uh, it's, it's really cold, like it was freezing this morning. It was spectacular. I wish it was a bit warmer. Mentally, I know it's going to be tough to get back into it again. It always is at the start of the legs, but um, it's exciting. It's the last big challenge. Mark is already exhausted after five months on the road. Now he must travel coast to coast across America, then Lisbon to Paris, if he wants to achieve his dream, one of the world's greatest endurance records. To make the finish, he must achieve a complex balance of pacing versus pressure. Well, this is uh, day two uh, in the US, and um, oh, it's as beautiful as I'd hope, but it's not nearly as easy cycling. Um, I'm having a bit of a tough time. It is frustrating. I need to I need to bring it back and start focusing on the day. Because I mean, there, there is still a long way to go. There's still four, four and a half thousand miles left. And if I start, you know, hurting myself over these these days to, to, to try and um, keep up an unrealistic average, then, you know, I won't get to the end in one piece. So, um, yeah, I just need to start focusing on the moment again. The flight from New Zealand has taken him into winter and the problem of short daylight hours. Normally, he's on the road for 11 hours a day. I've come up with this solution. I'm going to um, switch my lights on and ride into the night. The night riding is risky and demanding. But it has an unexpected bonus. He's got the wrong sleeping bag for winter. So the longer on the bike, the warmer he stays. Less time lying in a cold tent. I did... Uh over two hours of night riding and uh, it was just so hairy. When you've got your lights on at night, all you're following is the white line and it disappears. And there's quite often not these nice crash barriers that, like that. And uh, so there's the ocean and these massive cliffs going straight down. The start from Paris was on August the 5th. It's now New Year's Eve, and Mark's bagged another great city, Los Angeles. It's uh, 4.50 in the afternoon, and uh, that makes it 12.50 in Scotland, so it's already New Year's Day in Scotland, and uh, that means it's my birthday. That means I'm 25. Pretty good way to celebrate on my own, but uh, right into LA at sunset. Five months on the road and a year older, the only celebration, he's still on target. But the months of isolation, racing against himself, are taking their toll. It's the 2nd of January, um, and this is day 150 of, you know, getting up early, getting on the bike, doing 100 miles, finding my food, finding my rest. And it's all possible. It's, uh, I mean, I find, I'm finding it quite mentally tiring. Yesterday on the bike, I'd completely lost it. Like I wasn't, I wasn't in the zone at all. Um, you know, I wasn't sitting comfortable on the bike. I wasn't getting the miles done. I wasn't just sort of zoning out and just 
spinning the legs and just getting on with it. I need to forget about the world and just get the miles done for the next month. I really have found that I've had a mental slump every 1,500, 2,000 miles. And it came yesterday. I don't think it was helped by uh, getting through LA and all the stops starting there, but uh, time to go in the land. Same time to say goodbye to the Pacific. The Pacific's been amazing. What a beautiful ride. Struggling to shake off his mental slump, he's about to be physically tested as he heads inland over the 6,000-foot coastal mountains. I'm now in the middle of absolutely nowhere, and I've got a huge climb ahead of me. Unfortunately, there's a, the forecast is snow um, for, for a head for the highland. I'm going for a 4,800-foot um, pass ahead. It's going to be a couple of hours in the dark. I really hope it doesn't snow tonight, because I'm going to be camping again in my one-season sleeping bag. So, um, so if it snows, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be cool. Then, when the going is already tough, it gets tougher still. Well, look at this for great timing. I've punctured. <laughs> what, a, what a terrible place to puncture. It's been raining all the way up the hill and we stopped momentarily. So, so I'm going to try and just pump it up and uh, get to the top. Um, so I don't think I have to fix it here. Cancel that. I've got to, got to change it. I've got to change the puncture. It's a terrible, terrible place to do it. I'm in a little lay-by in a steep gorge in the middle of the night. But at least it stopped raining. <laughs> Always think of the positive. It's not raining. That was one of the worst nights in a tent I've ever had. Uh, it didn't snow, but the, the, the wind picked up a lot in the night and my tent collapsed again. And uh, it was just miserable. I had to attach it up to the... Um, bike to, to stabilize it in the night. Oh, I'll tell you about it later, I've got to keep going, it's too cold. Keep going, keep going. Mark's only had eight days off and five months on the road. He's not been beaten by desert heat or monsoon rain. Now winter puts him to the test. The weather forecast is to get worse today and snow in the high ground. The road was shut two or three times yesterday between here and Phoenix because of mudslides and uh, they're threatening the same for the road ahead which is which is hilly. Um, so if I got stuck out in that 90 mile stretch um, in conditions like that uh, I really would be stuck. I'd be in a lot of trouble. This time sanity prevails. He seeks shelter in a motel. Everything from clothes to sleeping bag is soaked. I've stopped today, which was a bit disappointing after just 30 kilometres. Definitely, definitely feel sort of pangs of guilt about it because, um, you know, all I've done day after day, I've day for 155 days is, um, you know, push, push, push. See the rain, it's just getting worse and worse. I'm, ho I'm maybe going to race out and see if there's a laundry mat in town so I can clean some of my clothes. I've not, um, I've not managed to clean any clothes since LA. If it hadn't been for the fact that, uh, no, I don't need to justify any further. I've done the right thing, but uh, but it's a hard decision to make. All I want to do is get the miles done. He may beat himself up, but the rest pays off. We've arranged to meet up with Mark for the last time. We find him late in the day on a Texas interstate. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? <laughs> you find me? You're looking good. I spend sort of days at a time, well, almost weeks without speaking to people, and it's, yeah, it's, it's months since I've really seen anyone that I actually know, so <laughs> my banter to begin with might be a wee bit limited. I'll get into it, don't worry. Right, I need to stop quickly and pick up some supplies. I'm going to be camping again tonight and um, get off this interstate. There's not, 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 not many places to hide on the big plains here, but hopefully when I cut south across the hills, it'll be nice and, nice and sheltered, find somewhere. And we've got another, another 30, 40 kilometers to do tonight. challenge every evening is finding 
finding somewhere by headlight, by head torch, that you can camp. To claim the Guinness World Record, Mark must cycle 18,000 miles. Tired or not, he must log every detail. To finish a few miles short would be disastrous. He's no intention of going round again. I'm doing it because it's there to be done. I truly believe I'm capable of doing it and that it hasn't been done to, to a competitive level before. The underlying goal has always been the Guinness World Record and that might be the goal. But I, th I, th I think my interest is, is truly in the adventure of it. Here's proof of how cold it was last night, an icy bottle. Despite discomfort and sub-zero temperatures, he's no problem motivating himself each morning. As the amazing sunrise makes it all worth it. My nose wasn't freezing off. For five months now, like I've been physically tired. The thing which makes it possible is, is the way I compute that fatigue. Like all top athletes, his secret lies in an ability to get into a mental zone day after day. You know, there's days where I've really been hurting. I've had aches and pains and this thing's been seriously wrong, but you don't notice it because if you're in the, if you're focusing and you're, once you're there, once you're in the zone, you don't have to focus. It's getting there. <laughs> Physical pain can distract from entering the zone. For over two months, he's been suffering from desperate saddle sores, at times open, seeping wounds. To let them heal, he would have to stop. If, if something's sore enough for long enough, then the nerves stop reporting. <laughs> so, um, you know, the saddle sores don't go away whilst you sit on the bike for eight, 10 hours every day without break. But, uh, you know, first few hours always hurt in the bike, but normally by by lunchtime, early afternoon, the backside stops reporting the pain to the head. <laughs> it's hard to describe, but saddle sores are one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever experienced. He may ignore the signals from his backside, but his stomach demands attention. Mark needs to eat the calorie equivalent of 24 cheeseburgers a day. So, to prevent loss of power, his route must try and include good meal breaks. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I don't normally get anything quite as swanky as this. I almost never sit in a, sit in a restaurant, but uh, some good calories here. Chicken and steak. I've got some, some good proteins with some, some beans there and um, some good carbs and stuff. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. Next course. <laughs> it's good to get some eggs in. So this is a second main course. <laughs> One good thing in the States is that most food types, packaged foods, have the calories on the back in black and white. So taking down, it was a lot harder going through Asia, where you just got a plate of dal and a plate of rice, and you were just sort of saying, what is this? Chug along, chug along like the old Virginia creeper Down among the mountain laurel, I'm a gonna meet you Baby, stoke my fire so we can make it home tonight It's not just the fruit that lifts his morale. He's now halfway across America. Up until 15,000 miles, really, I was counting up. Now I'm counting down. I've, I've cycled 3,000 miles before this trip. And so I'm within the distance which I've cycled before, and there's something quite comforting about that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm counting down a distance which I'm, you know, <laughs> I find mentally easier to compute. I think, I think that change in mindset at this point has actually been quite important because I think mentally I'm quite, quite burnt out at this point. I have been hard, uh, finding it harder in the second half of the race to keep 